Number 9. Soviet T-34 Tank Developed during the early stages of World War II, the Soviet T-34-76 tank became well known for its mobility, armor protection, and firepower. It would lose its effectiveness later on in the conflict, but when the Nazis first came face to face with it during their invasion of the Soviet Union, they were shocked by what it was capable of. In 2016, one of the few surviving examples of the T-34-76 was pulled from the Don River in southern Russia's Voronezh region. For more than 50 years, it had sat at the river bottom 23 feet beneath the water's surface. The discovery disproved the belief among experts that all the T-34 tanks produced at the Stalingrad tractor factory had been destroyed in battles long ago. There are two main stories about how the tank ended up in the river. One version, based on local legend, claims that Soviet troops sank the vehicle to avoid it falling into enemy hands. But the powerful tank was not disarmed when it was found, indicating that this was probably not what happened. Another explanation holds that the tank fell into the river while traveling on a pontoon bridge. Based on the evidence, this seems much more likely to be the case. The tank was in surprisingly good condition for having spent more than a half a century in the murky river. In fact, officials even said that they believed it could run again after its decades-long hiatus. Number 8. Clotilda Slave Ship As the 400th anniversary of the transatlantic slave trade approached in 2019, the Slave Rex Project SWP, announced the discovery of the last slave ship to arrive in the U.S., a two-masted schooner called the Clotilda. The vessel transported 110 African captives from what is now the country of Benin to Alabama in 1856. After arriving in the U.S., the Clotilda's captain, William Foster, ordered for the ship to be burned and sank to conceal evidence of participation in the slave trade, which the federal government had banned in 1808. Rumors about the wreck's existence had been whispered about for decades but remained unproven until divers finally found it buried in mud in Alabama's Mobile Delta. The water wasn't very deep, but the conditions were treacherous and visibility was almost zero. Researchers were recently surprised to discover that the wreck remains mostly intact. As it turns out, most of the ship didn't actually catch fire, and the mud that it's buried in has helped to preserve it. The upper portion of the Clotilda is long gone, but two-thirds of it survives. This includes the area below deck and a pen that was used for holding African captives, where conditions were indescribably dismal. Human beings were stashed like cargo into this unlit, unventilated area, where they languished for weeks on end. After the Civil War ended, 32 of the captives who were brought to the U.S. on the Clotilda formed a community called Africatown, USA. Located a few miles north of downtown Mobile, it's home to an estimated 100 descendants of the people from the Clotilda who helped spark the movement to find the sunken ship. Plans for the wreck remain up in the air. Raising it would be expensive and the vessel might be too delicate to be pulled from the water. Descendant, a documentary about the Clotilda, will premiere in January at the annual Sundance Film Festival. Number 7. Ancient Skull Two kayakers got the shock of a lifetime last summer when they discovered a human skull along the Minnesota River roughly 110 miles west of Minneapolis. They notified Renville County Sheriff Scott Habel, who turned the skull over to a medical examiner, thinking it might be linked to a missing person cold case or a murder. From there, it landed in the hands of a forensic anthropologist with the FBI, who determined through radiocarbon dating that the skull belonged to a young man who likely lived between 6,000 and 5,500 BC. The news came as a surprise to authorities, according to Habel, who spoke with CBS News following the discovery. He further explained that the anthropologist identified a depression in the skull that may point toward the person's cause of death. Habel posted photos of the discovery only to be met with backlash from Native Americans, who were quick to point out that posting images of the remains was culturally offensive. He removed the post and clarified that his office did not mean any disrespect whatsoever and that the skull was turned over to local tribal officials. Unfortunately, the controversy continued from there. In a statement, Minnesota Indian Affairs Council Cultural Resources Specialist Dylan Gutch accused authorities of failing to inform the council or the state archaeologist of the discovery as required by state law. He also criticized Habel for describing the remains as a little piece of history and not identifying the individual as a Native American. Anthropologist Kathleen Blue told the New York Times that the skull definitely belonged to an ancestor from one of the area's modern-day tribes. She went on to say that the man likely ate a diet of plants, deer, fish, turtles, and freshwater mussels. Blue conceded that experts don't know much about the region during that time period, but that the glaciers from the last ice age had retreated just a few thousand years earlier, so there probably weren't many people wandering around what is now Minnesota. Number 6. Messages in a Bottle K. 
Caitlin Moody and her husband Austin were enjoying some quality time in their boat on South Carolina's Lake Murray when they spotted a wine bottle floating around in the water. Thinking it was just trash, Austin picked it up with plans to dispose of it properly, at which point Caitlin noticed that something was inside the bottle. She opened it up and found two notes wrapped in a plastic bag and which seemed to be an anonymous sender's well wishes for the finder. One note said, family is everything, while another said, do everything you can to help others in need and to be happy. The couple posted photos and details on Facebook in hopes of finding out who wrote the messages. While many commenters saw the notes as a much needed display of compassion in an increasingly cruel world, others, including local authorities, were concerned about the environmental and safety hazards of tossing a glass bottle into a lake. Speaking with local station WLTX, Lake Murray Association President Captain Mike Kirk pointed out that hitting the bottle at a high rate of speed could damage a boat or cause an injury. He suggested spreading messages of positivity online or in some other way that doesn't pose any physical dangers. The Moody's kept the bottle and its heartfelt words of kindness as a memento, but they still haven't managed to trace its origins. Have you ever found a message in a bottle? What did it say? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 5. Lost Spanish Galleon A Spanish galleon called the Santo Cristo de Burgos was en route from the Philippines to Mexico in 1693 with a load of silk, porcelain, and beeswax when it mysteriously vanished. Local legend among the indigenous population in what is now northern Oregon has long claimed that around the same time, a huge ship wrecked along the Nihalem spit dune near the mouth of the Columbia River. Scientists recently discovered the ship's ruins following a 15-year-long search along the Oregon coast, where pieces of wood, porcelain, and other evidence had been washing up for years. In fact, part of the ship's upper deck had even remained visible until the 1920s. Stories about the so-called beeswax wreck circulated, only to be ultimately proven as true amid rapidly circulating tales of treasure and lost gold. In addition to the information gleaned from local legend, scientists were tipped off by a commercial fisherman named Craig Andes, who spotted bits of wood in some sea caves and quickly determined that he thought it was ship timber. He notified a group called the Maritime Archaeology Society, MAS, in 2020, and at first, officials believed Andes had simply spotted driftwood. But testing revealed that it was from an ancient hardwood tree known as Ancardiacea, and that it was felled around the year 1650. Evidence further showed that the wreck was already there when a 25-foot wave struck the coast in 1700, narrowing down the likelihood that the ship was the long-missing Santo Cristo de Burgos. Speaking with National Geographic, cultural director of the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz, Robert Kenta, cited the discovery as proof that his ancestors knew what they were talking about all along. Number 4. Mammoth Tusk A group of college professors were floating down the Kuyukuk River near Coldfoot, Alaska during a research trip when they spotted a woolly mammoth tusk sticking out along the riverbank. The water was flowing high and fast, but University of Virginia UVA researcher Adrian Gailey managed to snap a photo while she passed by the object. During the last ice age, this part of Alaska was unglaciated. It was home to many grazing animals, including mammoths. And while the sight wasn't exactly surprising, it was still fascinating to see in person according to UVA researcher Howie Epstein, who was also on the trip. Patrick Druckenmiller, who works as the director of the University of Alaska Museum of the North, told National Public Radio that the region was an ideal habitat for woolly mammoths and that the area is famous worldwide for its abundance of Ice Age animal remains. He said that as things currently stand, it doesn't seem like a safe idea to try retrieving the tusk, but that if it fell out from its current position, it would only be right to take it to a museum and have it curated. Number 3. Illegal Liquor Police in Rajpur, India recently discovered 20 drums of illegal liquor floating along a river in the village of Bandarkash. They received a tip from an informant about a liquor manufacturing operation along the banks of the river, only to investigate and find no outward evidence of such. Acting on the suspicion that there was more to the story, the officers investigated the river itself and found the drums floating in deep waters tied to a rope. The vessels contained 2,000 liters of a substance called Mahua Lahan, which is used for making raw liquor. Authorities also found other liquor-making components which they seized and destroyed. This recent case highlights the ongoing problem of dangerous illegal liquor being made and sold throughout India. It's cheap, making it a popular choice among the country's impoverished masses, but it also often contains toxic and potentially deadly chemicals. And while people are aware of this, many are willing to take their chances for just 10 cents per glass or roughly one-third the cost of a lawfully concocted beer. Civilians have died in droves from bad batches of moonshine in recent years, owing to the tendency of illegal brewers to add rubbing alcohol or methanol to the booze to increase quantity and maximize their profits. 
Both national and regional authorities are doing what they can to get the problem under control, but it almost seems like they're fighting a losing battle as people cave to the temptation of affordable and addictive hooch. To make matters worse, some officials have even been convicted of participating in or at least facilitating the illicit trade rather than doing their job of protecting people from its dangers. Number 2. The Lost City of Kakiku as temperatures in Iraq spike amid an ongoing drought hitting as high as 113 degrees Fahrenheit, residents are left with no other choice than to drain the Mosul Reservoir for irrigation water. The decreasing water levels recently revealed the ruins of an ancient settlement believed to be the so-called Lost City of Kakiku. An excavation has identified ancient towers, clay tablets, and pottery vessels along with 10-foot-high walls that were found standing despite being made from sun-dried mud. Experts believe that the wall was preserved thanks to a layer of rubble that preserved it following a destructive earthquake. Archaeologist Ivana Pulges told the UK-based news outlet The Mirror that the particular building that the team dug up was once used for storing enormous quantities of goods. Meanwhile, archaeologist Peter Felzer described the survival of the clay tablets as close to a miracle. Additionally, the team found 22-foot-high walls covered in vibrant blue and red paintings. They believe that the settlement belonged to the mysterious Mitanni Empire, which once ruled over a vast area encompassing parts of modern-day Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. Not much is known about the powerful but short-lived dynasty, and researchers are hoping that the recently discovered city will help them better understand the obscure ancient culture. Number 1. Ancient Garbage A prehistoric bone tool found in Australia's lower Murray River known as Murrawong Bone Point may date back to some 8,000 years ago according to a study that was published last year. Discovered in 2008, it's the first artifact of its kind to be recovered from the river since the 1970s. It's a reminder to experts of the limited research that has been done on bone tools and non-stone artifacts in the country. Interest in bone artifacts was limited until relatively recently, in the words of study co-author Amy Roberts, who spoke with the Academic Times. So there's a lot we don't know about them, she said, explaining that researchers have traditionally been more interested in stone than bone, partially because stone stays preserved more easily. The paper, written by Roberts and her colleagues, serves as a sort of groundwork for future bone artifact studies in Australia. It points out that the bone point resembles others that the continent's ancient people used as cloak pens. The artifact itself, which was likely fashioned from a wallaby or kangaroo foreleg, appears to have been discarded by its owner, rather than purposely buried, indicating that it may have broken and lost its usefulness. Roberts conceded that because the artifact is broken, experts can't be 100% sure about its interpretation, especially since they have very little to compare it to in terms of similar findings along the South Australian part of the Murray River. 8. Russian Rockets In the 20th century, the Soviet Union and the United States were competing in what's known as the space race to be the first to achieve space flight. As the Russians built various nuclear arms and other craft to send astronauts into space, it makes sense that there would be some projects that were later abandoned. Deep in the forests of Siberia sits one of the largest spaceports known as the Baikonur Cosmodrome. It was built in 1955 in southern Kazakhstan and was the location of the first launch of the Sputnik 1 satellite, as well as many other historic missions into space. Even today, various space missions including commercial, scientific and military launches take place at this site, which has led to debris from the rocket launches raining down on the remote hills. During the Soviet era, the USSR worked to recover booster rockets from launches to prevent secrets of their space missions from leaking. Now, pieces of space debris continue to rust in the grasslands of Kazakhstan. With so much space junk littering the landscape, local villagers have found a way to make a living by gathering the fallen scraps of completed and abandoned space missions. In other areas in Russia, more space junk sits abandoned in remote forests, including the Zenith and Molniya, two rockets left over from the space race. The Zenith was a class of rocket launcher built to launch piloted vehicles like the Soyuz, which has been in service for 60 years and made more than 140 flights. There was just one problem. The launcher was made in Ukraine, and when the Soviet Union collapsed, many of the projects were given up and it was abandoned. 7. Stack Rock Fort Off the western coast of Wales, an island sits abandoned in the creepy mist. It dates back to the mid-19th century, when Stack Rock Fort was built there to defend the Royal Naval Dockyard against the invasion of Napoleon's forces. Now, centuries later, visitors claim to hear the cannon fire and the echoing footsteps of the more than 150 soldiers that were once stationed there. After the building was destroyed in 1929, nature tried to overtake it 
with overgrown weeds and vegetation engulfing the building and making it uninhabitable. It's a ghostly sight to see Stack Rock Fort lingering in the middle of the water. It also has a haunting beauty that draws photographers to the area, who can't help but be enchanted by the crumbling parapets and ancient stonework that make up the structure. The building was originally built in the mid-1850s with a three-gun tower. At one time, there were 16 guns arming the fort, with each weighing 18 tons. For those who want to brave a trip to the island, the only way to get there is by boat. Once you arrive, there's only one way up, a metal ladder that leads from the craggy outcrop. Over the years, ghost hunters have gone to the island with cameras and special equipment to see if they can find any signs of supernatural life there. Visitors describe an incredible sense of isolation, even though they're only 10 minutes from the mainland. They also heard strange noises that sound like voices coming from the lower levels of the structure, as well as loud bangs and a low rumbling metallic sound that sounds a lot like the large weapons that were originally employed to defend the island. Could the ghosts of the soldiers who served at the island to protect the coast still linger there? Those who have visited Stack Rock Fort believe there's definitely something strange going on. 6. Abandoned Inuit Village if you ever make it to Alaska and get tired of seeing icebergs, whales, and the state's expansive snowy landscape, you might want to head to the coast to catch a glimpse of an eerie abandoned Russian village. The village of Norkin sits on the Russian side of the Bering Strait directly across from Alaska. The village was founded in the 14th century by the Inuit, then later rediscovered by a Russian explorer named Semyon Dezenyov, who came across the village after he was sailing through the rough waters of the Bering Strait in 1648. At the time, the Soviets had a policy of disbanding unpromising villages or small settlements that didn't contribute to the Soviet economy. Under this policy, people from small villages were ordered to abandon their settlements. After Desnyov came upon the village and revealed its location to the Russians, all 400 residents of Norkin were displaced, leaving the village abandoned. At the time, there were 13 tribes living in the village with a distinct dialect and unique traditions including legends and folk tales. One common tale was that whales would swim ashore and take the most beautiful woman from the village in exchange for the protection of the settlers there. Even today, the abandoned rib bones of massive whales can be seen scattered across the desolate landscape. Still, if you want to visit this desolate place, you can stand on the shoreline of Alaska on a clear sunny day and catch a glimpse of the territory only 50 miles in the distance. 5. The Mysterious Village of Pegrima the history of Pegrima, a Russian ghost town, is almost as elusive as the village itself. Located in the Medvezhugorsk district, Pegrima sits on the bank of Lake Onega. Even though not much is known about the village, researchers believe it dates back at least 500 years, and it was an old fishing town before it fell into disrepair. In the 1770s, a chapel was built on a small cape in the village, a structure that's still standing today as a haunting reminder of the once small, isolated population that inhabited the area. Other buildings have survived the elements, including a small community of wooden houses built to house the population. So, what could have caused the tiny village to decline? Most of Pogrema's history is lost, and what little remains is only known through the stories of the locals, but some believe that because of its remote location, there was never enough electricity to sustain its villagers. As the younger generations realized how hard life was in the wilds of Russia, they packed up their belongings and moved away. Without the help of younger, stronger residents, the older villagers were unable to evolve and Pogrema was eventually abandoned. The village decayed without anyone living there. All religious icons were removed from the chapel after the Russian Revolution, taking Pogrema's identity away from it and leaving it a shell of what it once was. 4. Abandoned Weather Station Russia's Rangel Island may look abandoned from the outside. If you were to take the 2,000-kilometer, 1,200-mile trek along the coast, you'd find the old weather station has been taken over by a group of polar bears. It might seem natural that the bears would take over the remote location. A mysterious phenomenon might have had a hand in helping the bears to settle there. Every nine years, the floating ice moves closer to the shoreline around summertime, and it seems to attract the polar bears who hitch a ride on the ice chunks. Before the bears took Wrangell Island over, the otherwise inaccessible nature reserve on the island was home to creatures of a different nature. Evidence of bones and fossils show that almost 4,000 years ago, woolly mammoths roamed the island. Even though there were no predators there to challenge them, they too struggled to survive with limited food, 
They evolved, shrinking to half their original size before they disappeared from the island around the same time as humans arrived there. In the early 1800s, stories of the mysterious island circulated through the north, with some taking sledge trips across the ice to find the island, but with no luck. It wasn't until 1867 that a whaler named Captain Thomas Long supposedly spotted and landed on Wrangell Island. Later, a weather station was built there, but it was abandoned in 1992, and since then the wind and rain have battered the neglected buildings. Sadly, even though the bears continue on the island, they're still at risk. Around 12 million abandoned fuel barrels were scattered along the Russian coast after being discarded by the Soviet Union. As these barrels continue to wash up along the shores of the island, the waste could threaten the course of nature and the lives of the polar bears. In the waters around the island, humpback whales, seabirds, sea lions, and seals swim every day, putting them at risk too. It will be a massive undertaking to clean up the industrial waste, but it would be an ideal thing to do to save these creatures and help them to continue to thrive. The only way to get onto Wrangell Island is with a special permit given to you by Russian authorities, something that they don't do often. Would you be adventurous enough to visit this station? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 3. Abandoned Suspension Bridge Along the Manawuta River in New Zealand, a ghostly reminder of a once prosperous farming community sits abandoned along a rural road. Suspension wires from the old bridge that once serviced the local flax industry now dangle untethered from the haunting structure. The bridge was one of 15 suspension bridges important that helped transport materials and workers across the river. From 1900 to 1921, the area was a hub of activity, with 30 flax mills that took up an area of 14,500 acres, 5,900 hectares, processing and transporting material throughout the country. The bridge opened in January 1918 and became a complex component of three nearby mills and their farmers' daily operations. Only three years later, the local industry collapsed after the economy changed and a disease ravaged flax plants. As a way to turn his fortunes around, one of the unfortunate local farmers decided to buy shares of land around the bridge so he could assume responsibility for its operation. In the mid-1920s, he decided to operate it as a toll bridge. However, even his business savvy couldn't protect him from the government, who decided to replace the bridge with one they wanted to build. The replacement bridge would not replace the old toll bridge for another three decades. The government retired it before removing the timber deck structures to prevent people from using it, but to this day, the concrete structure and some of its abandoned wires serve as a reminder of more prosperous times for the small village. 2. Sanatorium du Basil At first glance, the imposing architecture of the Sanatorium du Basil in Belgium might give you the chills. The hospital opened in 1903 to treat tuberculosis. It was modern for its time, with electricity that came directly from a power plant on site. As the facility grew after the Second World War and another pavilion was built on the property, the population of the sanatorium continued to grow. The facility was huge for over half a century, housing thousands of children and adults and treating countless patients who were often there for over a year before returning home healthy again. Different drugs were developed in the second half of the 20th century, and the number of patients steadily dropped and the sanatorium started to decline. What started out as a facility to help people had a bit of a tragic demise as it fell into decay and was abandoned. Between 2010 and 2013, the site was revamped and it reopened as housing for asylum seekers, mentally ill or violent. Structures suffer as shelters begin to deteriorate from overuse and neglect and as nature tries to overtake buildings. Walking paths become overgrown and the windows and sunscreen shattered. Inside, the rusting bath that were part of the spa once used to combat tuberculosis decayed. With such a loud history, it's allowed strange urban legends to circulate about the facility. Urban explorers who've made the trek to the sanatorium have found traces of blood and strange symbols painted on the walls. Police have even found the belongings of missing people there, but just like the facility itself, any proof of these urban legends remains hidden in the middle of the Belgian forest. 1. French Chateaus France is a country that's rich in art, culture, and history. However, even with its prosperity, there are a number of abandoned castles scattered throughout the French countryside that once belonged to the elite. Many of these were abandoned and destroyed during the French Revolution, 
but others, including the Chateau de Grand Val, survived the conflict only to be used during World War II. It was a hiding place for factions of the French resistance. Eventually, it was destroyed by Nazi forces and left in ruins. Another infamous castle that's now a shell of its former self belonged to King Richard I, who ruled as King of England. Known as Richard the Lionheart, the king spent his life defending the land he owned in France. Construction of his castle began in 1196, but he earned the scorn of his people by using money from England's treasury and taxes paid by its people to fund his armies and military exploits. That same year, he signed a peace treaty with the King of France for land located in Normandy. A manor known as Andeli was part of that treaty, and under the terms negotiated with the King of France, Richard was supposed to keep the castle unfortified. Seeing that the site of the manor was a strategic position that would help the English gain a position in their Normandy defenses, the king ignored the treaty and built Chateau Gallard on the rock of Andeli. He spared no expense in fortifying the castle, adding dry moats and an inner keep to protect the building. He also used concentric fortifications that gave more protection to his men, and he added what's known as a Mackie collation, which was a floor opening that allowed the person above to drop oil or boiling water on attackers below. The chateau didn't end up being the saving grace for King Richard. In one attack, he received an arrow wound to his shoulder that remained infected and eventually killed him. After he died, his brother, King John of England, wasn't able to defend the Norman territories in France, and the chateau suffered. For an entire year, Chateau Gallard was under siege from French forces, who entered the Seine Valley and took Normandy. Other conflicts over the years battered the castle, until the French eventually took hold of it in 1449. After that, the castle was abandoned, with thieves and bandits using it as a refuge. With no one to care for the chateau, it fell into disrepair, and on the orders of King Henry IV, the chateau was demolished in 1599. The remains of the fortress still stand as a historic monument, 85 kilometers, 52 miles to the east of Paris, where visitors can travel the same route King Richard did through the Seine Valley, enjoying the landscape and imagining what life was like for King Richard when he set his sights on what became a historic chateau. 8. Fighter jets buried in Iraqi desert after the US invaded Iraq in 2003 in search of nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons, American forces discovered a number of strange items. These finds included gold toilets and firearms, a Quran scribbled in blood, and Saddam's romance book. While they didn't discover any weapons of mass destruction, they did discover an airplane buried in the sand right next to a perfectly decent airport. American forces dug up dozens of MiG-25 Foxbat fighters and SU Frogford fighter bombers that were buried in the sand. They were missing their wings, but were surprisingly in good shape. The big question was, why would Saddam intentionally put planes into the ground? During the Iran-Iraq war, which lasted until the late 1980s, the Iraqi Air Force was able to compete with the better US-purchased aircraft flown by the Islamic Republic of Iran at the time. However, Iranian fighter pilots were extremely skilled, and Iraqi pilots were frequently forced to escape the sky in order to avoid the onslaught of Iranian F-14 Tomcats. However, against other Middle Eastern nations, Saddam Hussein's air strength may potentially make a difference in the conflict, but only against other Middle Eastern countries, not with the US. Iraqi pilots were ready to defend their nation against the US-led invasion, but the Iraqi dictator was not having it. He was well aware of what American technology might do to his plane, especially now that the US was flying the F-22. Saddam wanted his own air force, so he made the decision to keep them all secure. The dictator demanded that his most modern aircraft be stripped and buried near the air bases of Al-Takadum and Al-Assad. In hindsight, this was most likely a wise choice. During the assault, the US Air Force immediately and violently demolished whatever was left unburied. Iraq's air forces nearly vanished while fighting the coalition of the willing. Saddam thought that by burying the planes in the sand, he would be able to save them and utilize their advanced status to frighten his adversaries and neighbors when he was ready, since he imagined he would still be in power after everything was said and done. 7. Coleman Scott Colmanskop in southern Africa's Namib Desert is one of the creepiest abandoned settlements ever. It's full of abandoned buildings and businesses that were just left as is 
until the desert sand swept in and took over the formerly man-made terrain. Colmanskop was founded in 1908 when a Namibian railway worker named Zakarias Lawala discovered diamonds in the area. Consequently, eager prospectors swarmed to the region hoping to get their slice of the pie. By 1912, a working town had been formed and Colmanskop accounted for roughly 12% of the world's diamond output measured in millions of carats each year. The town was prosperous, given its principal and very profitable industry. Colmanskop's high-maintenance residents were provided with a butcher, baker, post office, ice factory, and other amenities. Colmanskop grew even more bizarre when citizens wanted an entertainment sector, bringing European opera ensembles to the remote desert for performances. However, the Diamond Town's fame was fleeting. Colmanskop's natural resources had been exhausted by the 1930s, and the town was totally abandoned by 1956. Colmanskop isn't exactly the easiest place to visit nowadays, and you need a special permit to get there. The town is part of a forbidden zone, operated by De Beers and the Namibian government. 6. A Crashed and Abandoned Jeep Daniel Robinson, a 24-year-old field geologist, hopped into his jeep and drove away from his remote job sites in Buckeye, Arizona in 2017. He didn't tell anyone where he was going or why he was going before they followed him further into the Sonoran Desert. Daniel has not been seen or heard since. A rancher spotted Daniel's abandoned jeep on a farm 4 miles 6.4 kilometers from his employment location nearly a month after he disappeared. The trunk had flipped and crashed into a ravine on its side. The airbags went off the driver's side glass shattered and the front windshield broke. The evidence suggests that Daniel was wearing his seatbelt at the time of the collision. The clothes, mobile phone, wallet, and keys of the young man were discovered at the site, but Daniel was nowhere to be found. A comprehensive police search including helicopters, cadaver dogs, and tracking canines was unsuccessful. Foot searches organized by Daniel's father David have also proven futile. Daniel had the habit of informing his loved ones about his vacation intentions. The police did not suspect foul play, but the family accused them of failing to conduct any forensic testing to rule it out. They have resolved to keep looking for Daniel until they discover where he is and what happened to him. The search continues. What do you think happened to Daniel? Let us know in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 5. Scrolls of the Dead Sea In March 2021, archaeologists digging in the Judean desert discovered dozens of shards of a Dead Sea scroll containing biblical text. According to a government news statement, the fragments are the first portion of the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered in about 60 years. They were uncovered inside a cave where Jewish rebels against the Roman Empire hid some 1,900 years ago. Since 2017, Archaeologists have been excavating in the Judean desert's caves and cliffs as part of a national campaign aimed at avoiding antiquity looting. Teams also discovered a 6,000-year-old child skeleton, rare coins, and a whole basket said to be the oldest in the world, dating back 10,500 years. The Dead Sea Scrolls, discovered more than 70 years ago in caves at Qumran, are among archaeology's most significant biblical discoveries holding the earliest manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible and other Jewish texts dating to the time of Jesus. The majority of the scrolls are housed at the Shrine of the Book, which is part of the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. The most recent scroll fragments were discovered in the Judean Desert's Cave of Horror, which is about 26 feet below the clifftop. It is only accessible via abseiling from the top. According to the press release, the location has attracted looters since the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered over 70 years ago. Because of the area's harsh climate, scrolls and old manuscripts have been extraordinarily well-preserved. According to the press release, crews have investigated 49.7 miles, 80 kilometers of desert caverns since October 2017, many of which are totally inaccessible. Eleven lines of text, comprising fragments of Greek translation of Zechariah 8.16-17 have been rebuilt. On another fragment, verses from Nahum 1.5-6 were discovered. Centuries of hot, dry weather mean that the big basket, with a capacity of 90 to 100 liters and made of plant material, can shed new light on how things were stored roughly 1,000 years before the advent of pottery. The Dead Sea Scrolls, largely found in the last century, 
include the earliest known copies of sections of practically every book of the Hebrew Bible, except the Book of Esther, written on parchment and papyrus. 4. Gafsa Lake The Gafsa Lake is a massive body of water that arose out of nowhere in the southern Tunisian desert. The lake, which is over 65 feet 20 meters deep and covers an area of roughly one hectare, was found by shepherds in 2014 and is located 10 miles 16 kilometers east of Gafsa along the Om Larayas road going to Tunis. With temperatures averaging 104 degrees Fahrenheit in this location, Lake Gafsa provides a quick oasis for the people. The locals thought it was the result of a spell or some other supernatural occurrence, and they named it Gafsa Beach and turned it into a true resort. The lake is about 2.5 acres in size and about 59 feet 18 meters deep. Local geologists believe that an earthquake shattered the rock above the water table, causing the liquid to rise to the surface. A more simple explanation is that it's just rainwater. When news got out about the discovery, people hurried to the lake to cool down in the scorching heat. Though it has a lovely look and an abundance of rocks that may be utilized for diving, it's filled with green algae, which causes stagnation and can cause infections. Because of the high level of risks that come with swimming in the lake, the head of the Office of Public Security issued a bathing ban on Lake Gafsa. Several warnings were issued about the dangers of swimming there, yet many residents refused to listen. Geologists determined that the lake site has phosphate deposits. They emit carcinogenic radioactive waste, making swimming extremely unsafe and harmful. The lake was discovered nearly 10 years ago, and there's been no additional official news since then. And experts have stressed that if the lake did emerge as a result of a breach in the water table, the fractures from where the water originated might lead the water to flow the opposite way and draw people to the bottom. 3. Petra The beautiful pink city was founded in the year 312 BC, making it over 2,300 years old and one of the oldest cities in the world. Petra, also commonly referred to as the Rose City, has been home to the people since 7,000 BC. The rock-carved city's first inhabitants were the Nabataeans, and it was the capital of the kingdom until the 4th century BC. The Nabataeans were Arab nomads who established a local trading center, which brought an abundance of income to them, which created their wealth. Most of their tribes could be found living in the desert areas or right in the desert. Their habit choice was chosen purely out of strategy, as it was easy for them to hide from the enemy. The Nabataean kingdom lost its independence to the Roman Empire in 106 AD. They renamed it Arabia Petraea. In the year 363, an earthquake wreaked havoc on the city just before the Byzantine era, which governed Petra for about 300 years. In 1812, Petra was rediscovered by a man named Johann Ludwig Burkhardt. Burkhardt used an Arab disguise and convinced his guide to bring him to the lost pink city. They discovered stunning cliff-carved constructions, complex sculptures and statues, sophisticated ceramics and jewelry, and much more. Petra is now one of the world's most recognized archaeological sites. Even still, just 5% of the city has been explored and many mysteries remain. However, Petra was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985. Jordan's government established legislation prohibiting anyone from residing there, and in 2007, it was listed as one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. 2. The Crucifixion in Rome While excavating in Cambridgeshire, England in 2017, archaeologists discovered the body of a man who had been crucified between the age of 25 to 35. A nail was discovered drawn through one of his heel bones, and his hands would have been tied to a cross during the crucifixion, likely causing him to suffocate to death. He was one of the 48 bodies that were found, who were all removed for a housing development that is today completed, but the only one that was crucified. The skeleton was discovered in its original location in November 2017, and the nail was first overlooked since it was just jutting out a centimeter or two on each side of the heel and was also coated in muck, making it even more difficult to spot. It was only discovered when the skeleton was sent to the lab to be examined and cleaned. The man who led the excavation stated that it was the first time a nail was discovered in a complete skeleton, so it's something they don't generally look for. Romans selected crucifixion for lower-class people, criminals, and condemned slaves. 
As a result, it's doubtful that the identity of the crucified man will ever be revealed. It's been found that this is the only time tangible evidence of crucifixion has been discovered in Northern Europe and the fourth time around the globe. Two of the four were penetrated with nails. After inspection, it was revealed that the bones were dated between 130 AD and 360 AD, which makes them 1,661 and 1,891 years old. After a DNA test was performed, it was shown that he was not blood-related to any of the bodies he was next to, but it was also confirmed that he was from the native population. The idea that he was a slave was debated because there were signs of thinning shins, which is a result of wearing manacles, but it was deemed inconclusive because there was no way to prove it, and he also could have been a prisoner. 1. Desdemona Shipwreck the merchant ship known as the Desdemona left Commodoro Rivadavia and set sail for Tierra del Fuego in 1985. There were 20 crew members on board, and the ship was carrying 20,000 bags of cement when the engine broke down, preventing the ship from exceeding 5 knots. A repair attempt was made at Ushaya, but it was unsuccessful. The captain opted to continue his voyage to the city of Rio Grande, despite having little engine power. Tides and severe winds made getting to Rio Grande impossible, so the captain sought refuge by traveling south down the coast. However, after passing Cape San Pablo, he hit bottom. As he attempted to exit, his stern collided with a bank that was not on the nautical chart. It pierced a hole in the ship, and it didn't take long before the ship was flooded. Captain Brillwitz eventually decided to purposefully strand the ship in order to keep it from sinking. The Navy intended to remove it following an inspection, but it remains abandoned in San Pablo Cove to this day. Thanks for watching. Which one of these abandoned desert discoveries was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.